Welcome to the bullshit free glitch hop dubstep uh, mega ultra tutorial, whatever the fuck you want to call it. My name's Tom Cosm. Welcome along. Glad you could be here. Um, so this particular series, I'm going to talk you through writing a whole tune. Now, usually what I do with these series is I focus on a particular thing like the bass lines or the synths or whatnot. I'm gonna actually going to start from scratch here. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar and starting for the very first time, I don't have any idea what to do about audio production. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to give you an overview of Ableton. We're going to build some uh, build some drums, build some bass lines, and then do some pads and synths and stuff. Now, if uh, you find that uh, it's going a little bit slowly for you, skip ahead to the other parts. The bass line stuff is where the real guts and the advanced stuff stuff happens. But for this particular part one, I'm going to start with just programming a drum beat so we can get something nice uh, that we can lay down the bass lines to. Now, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, this is Ableton Live right here. This is what you, you, you're approaching with when you open it up for the first time. Um, you'll see we've got this, this particular view here, which is called a session view. But this is used for uh, playing live and, 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 and playing with loops and all these kinds of things. We're not really going to focus on this for this tutorial. We might go into it a little bit later. But if I hit the tab key, you see we switch over into this area called the session view. Oh, sorry, the arrangement view. Now, we can also do this by clicking over here. So this is the uh, arrangement view. This is the session view. We're working in arrangement view because, as you can see, this is where we actually lay down a track this is where we actually write a track so we've got this nice kind of timeline here it goes from left to right you see we've got our, our seconds down the bottom zero a minute etc and up the top we've got our beat so 159 and as we zoom in with the navigation area up here by clicking and dragging down you'll see we've got our beat so one two three four two two three four three two three four now depending on how fast the tune goes uh, we specify it up here which is the beats per minute so this is how many of these beats which are the the, the individual kind of increments in between the bars how many of these per minute we actually have. So at the moment it's set to 120 by default. I'm going to change this to 100 because we're going to be writing a kind of a glitch hop tune. Now the other thing you'll notice here is that we've got two of these kind of layers or these tracks open. We've got one called audio, one called MIDI. Though this is the default. This is what ha this is what comes up when you load a project for the first time. You create a new project. It gives you one of each. These are the two types of tracks, the two types of layers we can use. So an audio track is where we actually have and as samples, audio, we can we can drag things in and see a waveform. Um, <clears throat> you can also record into here if you have an instrument or you have a mic or that, that kind of thing. In the MIDI track, this is more of a set of information. So a MIDI track, we load a machine, say a synthesizer or a sampler, for example, um, a, a machine that generates sound. And then in this MIDI track, we put information to say how that machine will actually play or how it will generate sound. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to delete this audio track because we don't want that. We're just going to use this first one MIDI track and I'm going to rename this to drums now, because we're going to lay down a drum beat and this is where our drums are going to go. Now, for, now what we need to do is we need to put in some kind of machine that can play drums. Now, if we go over to the uh, left hand side here, you'll see this this little arrow brings up this um this this box, this area where we can choose things. It's probably like this when you first start it. If you click it open, we have these different uh, options down the side, which are kind of, uh, this is where our pool is. This is where all of our resources live. So the first one here is the live devices. Uh, it probably looks like this. This is where all the native things that come with Ableton Live are. We've got instruments, MIDI effects, and audio effects. You'll also notice we have our VST instruments. So these are our third party instruments, uh, instruments and machines that other people have made. And then we've got our samples and our folders down here. This is kind of where we can navigate to places on a computer. So I'm gonna go up to the live devices area open up the instruments folder and you'll notice this is these are the these are all the instruments that come with Ableton Live Suite. Now, the particular type of machine that we want to load up for the drums is going to be called a sampler. It's a machine where you can load in individual samples, individual hits from a drum kit. Um, now, there's actually two of these. Uh, the one that comes free with Ableton Live, uh, just the Ableton Live, not the suite, is the Impulse. So if I double click that, you'll see it drops it down to the bottom here. This is where our machines and effects and uh, our instruments go. Now, you'll see we've got this thing called an Impulse, and you'll notice it's got eight individual slots. I'm not actually going to use this for, for this example, but just to show you one of the machines so you can drag in samples uh, and sounds into each one of these slots here. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to use a drum rack just because it's a bit more powerful. This is kind of the daddy of the uh, of the, uh, the, the the sampling instruments here. And you notice we now have 128 different slots here. So we can drag in samples into each one of these slots. Now the particular samples that I'm going to use, if I just go over to my one of my uh, navigation panels here, if you click up the top, and pick library, you can actually go into your library uh, which of, of sounds and uh, presets and all these things that come with Ableton Live. Um, I've actually gone to the Ableton website and I've downloaded this fantastic pack by this guy, KG Sorka. Uh, it's called Mad Beats. Um, it's free to download. If you go to the Ableton website, I'll put a link down the bottom where you can get it. I've chosen this particular um, 
um, bunch of samples here because they're free. Everyone can get them, and uh, they're actually really, really good. He's, he's very kindly given us some cool stuff. So um, if you go to the website, download the pack, and double click, it'll be an ADG file. It'll install this pack for you. Now, when you go into the samples, you will have this folder with these uh, with these beats. So if I open up um, this this folder here and we go into KG Beats, you'll see we've got, uh, they're categorized into, into different loops, into different hits. We're going to go into individual drum hits and you'll notice we've got five folders here. We've got cymbals, hi-hats, kicks, snares and toms, the basic tools you need for, for, for writing a beat. So the first thing I want to do is I want to load in a kick drum. So I'm going to open up that kick folder. We can also double click to make it a, the default folder. And it, by having this little icon here, this little headphone icon, we can actually scroll through each one of these samples and pick a particular kick. So I'm just going to click on the top one and push the down arrow until I find a kick drum I like. Let's turn it out a bit. I like that one, kick FRI 04. So what I can do, now I've decided I like that, I can click it, I can drag it into one of these slots down here. You can drag it into any one of these slots you like. I'm gonna stick with C1 just because I, that's how I work and I like to keep it simple. You'll also notice that each one of these has a, uh, a note that corresponds to something on the keyboard. So if you did have a MIDI keyboard, you could actually play that note and it would play that sample. So by dragging that kick down into the slot, we can now play it. And there's our kick, excellent. Let's go back and let's find a snare. So where's my snare folder? I'm just gonna scan through these and find a snare. I like that one, snare FRR5. So I'm gonna drag that into my snare. Excellent, now let's get some hi-hats. Open up the hi-hats folder. I like all of those. So I'm just gonna click on the top one, hold down shift, Click on the bottom one and now we can drag all of them at once down to D1 and you'll notice we get a little orange border around uh, some of the other slots here. We can load all of those samples in at once. Like so. So now I have this machine that's loaded with samples and uh, we're, we're pretty much ready to go. Now the next step is to go back over here into our timeline, into our drums track. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is zoom out. So I'm using this navigation thing at the top, I'm going to zoom out, and this is our loop area. So anything in between this point is going to loop over and over and over, assuming we have this button on, the loop button. Now this is what we want. So I've got this, uh, if we zoom in now, I've got this loop point from bar 33 to 37. You'll see it starts at bar 33, and it's four bars long. Now the reason I'm choosing this particular spot is we're going to create all the content here, we're going to write down a beat, and we're going to play our beat, get our baseline layers in here. And this is good because then we can move backwards once we've got, got everything sorted and we can create an introduction. So, how do I send information to the sampler? Well, I'm going to select the area where I want the information to be, and I'm going to go create MIDI clip or insert MIDI clip. You'll see that gives us a colored square in that area that I've currently highlighted. And this area, if I double click, you'll notice down the bottom, it changes into this sort of kind of vertical piano. I can drag this up to get a better look. Now, if I go back to our, um, our machine, this is a native Ableton Live machine, and so this MIDI clip has picked up that, that, that this is going to be controlling a sampler, so it's very kindly given us all of the samples and given them names here. So again, just like on the timeline, we're moving from left to right here, so this is your time, and these are our beats up the top. So we can now just double click and we can add in uh, little, little, um, little notes anywhere we want. So for an example, let's just put a kick here. A snare here, kick here, and a snare here. Now you'll notice we also get a, uh, if I zoom in up the top here on the timeline, it gives us some, some nice little squares to correspond to what's happening down here. So if I click on the start point here, so we've got this flashing orange line, and I click play. Very simple. Now you'll see how these uh, these these notes are quite short. Um, so that means that when this 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 uh, box is finished when it's when the line has passed it. It's actually going to stop playing the sample or the sound. So I'm going to try and drag the snares out. Let's say to double time so they last a bit longer. <clears throat> let's do the same for the kick. I can drag and select both of them and drag them out. Now you see how it snaps to the grid. One thing we can do if we want is we can hold down the command key. If we hold down the command key, you'll see that we can. It doesn't snap to the grid, but if we let go, it will snap. Um, the other thing you'll notice is as I zoom in here. The grid gets smaller and smaller for us, so this actually works in our favor. We can right click and change the uh, the width of that, so we can change it to medium, we can change it to wide, we can change it to narrow, um, or we can use command 2 to make it bigger, or command 1 to make it smaller. This is really handy when you want to get lots of little intricate notes in. So, 
That's good. Now, you notice when I selected that area, I selected four bars and I created the MIDI clip. So it gave us a four bar MIDI clip. And we can see this by looking down at the length area here. It says four. I actually want this to be a one bar MIDI clip. So I, want, I just want this to loop over and over and over. So by double clicking on it, going down to length, I can just hit one, push return. Of course, we can drag up and down or we can use the up and down keys as well. But I'm just going to hit one, hit return or enter, and you'll see how it gives us a loop point here. So if we zoom in, we now have a one bar loop repeating four times. Instead of one four bar loop, we now have four one bar loops. So let's just play that again. <clears throat> Pretty simple so far. Right, let's just chuck in some hi-hats. I'm just going to double click here, put the one, 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 two, three, four. Very simple. I'm going to select all four of those, hold down the option key and drag. So if we hold down the option key, we can duplicate what's happening. If it's not hold down, held down, it won't duplicate. But if we hold down the option key, it will actually copy them across. So now we have a very, very, very simple beat. Let's make those hi-hats shorter. I'm going to click and drag those hi-hats. Again, clicking, you'll see how we get this little close bracket if we hover over the end of one of them. If they're all selected, and we click, hold down the command key again to make sure it doesn't snap and make them short. We get very, very short hits. And we can drag a few of these out to make them a bit bigger. This kind of gives it a bit of expression. Now, of course, the problem we get here is because everything's aligned to these these grids, it's sounding like a like a computer's playing it. Now, most things in, in electronic music, if they're mathematically correct and they match up, it actually sounds good. You know, if you have 16, 32, 64 bar phrases, even with frequency um, and all that kind of stuff, it, it usually, if it's mathematically correct, it sounds good, but it doesn't really work with rhythm. You know, we want a kind of a human feeling. So what, we can, what can we do about that? Right. Well, we've got this thing over here called a groove pull. Now, the groove pull in Ableton Live is a, is a kind of a, a place where you can put these things that they call grooves. Grooves are kind of styles, they're kind of ways that something can be played rhythmically, rhythmically and uh, playing with the volume as well. So if I go back to my library up here, remember if we click on the title bar we can go library, this is where we found our samples. We're actually going to go over to this this, this directory called grooves. And this is, uh, this is there's, there's some folders within here which have particular grooves. The most simplest one is a swing. So if I scroll down, you'll see we've got swing eight and then a dash and then a number. The number corresponds to how strong this particular groove or feeling is going to be. And the, the number after the word is, is what kind of time increments uh, it's, it's going to be using. We're going to be using 16 because we've actually got 16, um, 16 notes in a bar. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16. We're going to be using 16. If we used 8, it would be too slow. The, the, the timing would be really weird and off. If we used 32, it would be too fast. We're, our, 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 our tune is in, is in, has 16 beats per bar. So we're going to use that. So if I choose, let's say, 1685, drag that groove into the groove pool. So this is saying I want to use this particular groove on elements that are within my tune. I can now gra drag that groove on top of a clip. Now have a listen to this. So what it's done is it's taken, we can't actually see it right now, but it's taken every second note and moved them across slightly like this. And it creates a, a swing, a kind of a shuffle feeling. Now this swing is very, very simple. Actually, if I insert another MIDI clip here for you and drag that groove into the MIDI clip, a, a groove is just basically a MIDI clip. I can double click it, zoom down and have a look. You can see these are the notes. So it's, it's, it's using this rhythmical pattern on top of this particular beat. Really, really good for giving it some feeling. I'm just going to delete that for now. Let's get rid of that groove as well. Um, if we look into the rest of our presets, you'll see we've got this folder called an MPC. The MPC, Akai MPC, is very famous for having some really, really good grooves and swings. And they, they've been included um, in Ableton Live, which is fantastic. So if we go down to the MPC swings, let's choose... We'll choose the most... Oh, let's choose 70. So MPC, 16, swing 70. Drag that into the groove pool. Drag it on top. Let's have a listen. It's a very, very subtle difference, but it, it does make quite a lot, um, quite a lot of change. Now, one thing, if you find that it's too strong, if the groove is too strong, we can change this thing called timing over here. So on the actual groove, we've got a timing, it's a percentage. If we bring that down to zero, it's exactly how we had it before. But if I bring it up, it 
Excellent. So now we've got a little bit of a human feeling. Um, I can. Oh, the other cool thing about grooves um, is if, if, let's say, you had an audio track, you recorded a drum, uh, a guitarist strumming a guitar, like ching chick ching chick What you can do is you can right click on that recording and extract the groove. So Ableton Live will actually go through, analyze the feeling of the actual thing that you've recorded, put a new groove into the groove pool for you, and then you can track that groove pool on top. Of something else within your tunes, say the drums. So if you have a drum program, some drum beats, you have a guitarist, you extract the groove, you can actually have the drum beat playing in the same kind of feeling as the guitarist. It's a really, really powerful, um, powerful little, uh, little trick. So, but we're not going to do that for now. So we've got our drums. Hi hats are sounding a little bit boring. So let's go in here and re remember we loaded up a whole bunch of different hi hats. Let's just move some of these around. So I'm just moving them up. And we can add in a, a little kind of roll here if we want. Actually, let's not put it there, let's put it here. This is the fun part, going through, trial and error, finding out what sounds good, trying to find something groovy. Let's move that one up, I'm using the arrow keys here. Drag that out. Okay, let's move that kick drum around, just so we've got a bit more of a broken beat. So I'm just moving. Excellent. Now the other thing that we need to think about here is something called velocity, which are these lines that correspond to each one of these notes. So underneath each note, we have a thing uh, called velocity. Now velocity is, is 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 a parameter. It's something that can be assigned to kind of anything within your well, not anything, but various things within your instrument. In this case, a sampler. But what it's usually used for is volume. So if I go double click on my drums track here. And here's my drum rack. What I can do is open up one of these samples by double clicking. You'll see we've got a, a visual representation. See, there's our kick drum sample if we play it. That's what a kick drum looks like. That's what a snare looks like. See the snare, the hi hats. But if we go to this kick drum, you'll notice these are all the parameters that we can change with the kick drum. We've got things like transpose, we can change the pitch, we can say how long it lasts for, uh, where the starting point of the sample is, all these kind of things. But we're just going to focus on this one here, which is vel or velocity. This is attached. To the volume. So the vol velocity is currently set at 0%. If I bring that up to 100%, that now means that this line is controlling the volume from 0 to 100%. Now, one thing we do need to know here is we need to we need to make sure that this velocity is the same for every sample. So we can go through each sample, click on it, bring the velocity up. But the easiest way is to right click on the velocity and go copy value to siblings. So by doing this, we're copying that velocity value to all the velocity values of every sample that's within our drum rack. So see, see it has a little brackets with 12 on it. That's what we want. So now each one of these, that particular oops, that particular line is going to correspond to the volume. Now it'll be louder for a start because these are all set to a certain, uh, certain uh, velocity. So I'm just going to select all of the notes by doing Command A, Control A on the PC, bring them down to about halfway. So now we can do things like that little hi-hat there. Let's bring the volume down on that one. If you bring this kick down, let's put a kick here and bring that down. You know, we can also hold down the command key and drag down on the actual note. And just, I uh, don't really need to do much here. I'm just going to give you an example. We'll get more into this when we work with the bongos. Great, I'm happy with that now, but now we've got one bar loop and it's looping four times. It's quite repetitive. So what we can do now is select that, or we can just double or just click on that whole kind of group of four one bar loops. And we can actually go edit, consolidate, or command J. What that does is it now turns these four bar loops back into one four bar loop. So you see now we have four bars down the bottom here. And this is great because now we can go in and we can start kind of very quickly messing with various different parts of the tune of the of e of each individual bar. So we're in bar two. So I'm just very quickly going through here for you. 
That one doesn't sound good, does it? See, that one's a bit loud. Bring that down. And let's make that one. See, if we turn on the headphones over here, we can actually listen to it as we move around. That one. Excellent. So now we have a really nice kind of four bar loop. It's got a little bit of, bit of variation. And uh, let's, let's move on now very quickly. So that, I'm happy with that drums. That's our MIDI track right there. I'm going to insert now an audio track. Remember we talked about these before. This is where audio sits. So we're not going to put a machine on this one. We're going to go back to our samples, so back to our library, close down the grooves, go back to our sample directory, and you'll notice he's got some cymbals here and he's got some crashes. So let's choose one of those. I'm just going to pick that first one and I'm simply going to drag it onto that audio track like so. I'm going to rename this audio track to Crash. It's a good uh, good move to keep these named because we're going to have lots of tracks soon. Now that's going to be very loud. Far too loud. So let's bring the volume down. This is your volume over here. Let's just drag this down. A bit lower. Awesome. Now one thing I like to do, I'm going to create one more audio track. Command T I use then, which is the shortcut. I'm going to name this to Rev Snare. Now what I'm going to do is go and find myself another snare. Oops, where are we here? Another snare. Find something with a long tail. It takes a little while to die. I'm going to use that one. Now, you'll notice that we've got a snare. You can kind of see the picture here. Our snare is on the second and the fourth beat. Two, four, two, four. I want to have a snare. Let's say drag it here. I'm going to change the length so it's exactly perfectly in a grid. This is because I want to reverse it. So if I click on this little reverse button down in the sample area down here, it's reversed it for us. If the snare wasn't the perfect length, you see if I reverse it, you see how it doesn't um, it doesn't fit into that grid. I want the snare, snare to suck up to hit that snare here. It gives a really cool effect. So by making it the right grid length, if we reverse it, we get... If I bring the volume down... Just like that. Now what I want to do also is I'm going to select one bar by clicking and dragging and I'm going to hit Command D which will duplicate that. I'm going to do that four times. So now we have... I'm going to bring the volume down even a bit more. Great, now the last thing I want to do in this drum track, I'm going to create one more MIDI track here. I'm going to call this Toms. So we're going to get some tom drums and we're going to put in a little roll at the end here just to give it a, a, a bit of a, a bit of a break. So it's really good for phrasing um, to move into the kind of the next set of four. But because we're looping, it's just going to feed back in on itself. But we've got this toms track. Remember, it was a MIDI track. Um, I did the shortcut, which is Command Shift T. You can just go create MIDI track if you like. Um, and let's go back to our instruments, our live devices up here. We're going to we'll use that impulse that I talked about before, that real simple sampler. It's very, it's very, very, it's, it's a good sampler. Um, so now we go to our sample directory, here's some toms, and let's listen to some of these toms. Something like those. That'll do. So I'm going to drag each one of those eight into the slots down here. One, two, three. It's very handy that there's eight for us as well. Seven and eight. So over here in this last area, this is where I want to insert a tom roll, create MIDI clip, double click it. And now I can put in some notes here. I'm just going to extend the grid so it's a bit easier for us. Now, we need to change the velocity because we're, they're a bit low. It doesn't matter on the impulse. You don't need to assign the velocity to the volume because it's already there by default. So this line by default will control the volume of the sample. Now, what's happening? This doesn't have a groove. It doesn't have the same groove as this clip. So this is playing straight, this is playing with the groove, and that's going to cause some problems. So we need to drag this groove on top of this clip as well. And let's make the grid a little bit smaller, and let's add in a bit of a roll. And 
and a little bit of velocity. Let's make that one a bit smaller. Playing around here. Sounding pretty good. Let's have a listen. Let's go in here. Now what I can do is I wanna let's make let's make the snare kind of a bit a bit rolly at the end of here as well. So I can select any area of this loop. Let's say I'm just gonna select uh, one bars worth. If I go edit, split, or command E. It's now cut that separately. So if I go in and edit this clip, it's not going to affect what's happening over here. Now, if this wasn't split, I'm just going to Command Z for you. If I go in here and uh, and move move shit around, it's just going to continuously loop. But I want to separate this from the rest because this is just an individual little hit. So let's just add in another snare. These toms are a wee bit loud. Just change those velocity a wee bit. Turn on this uh, preview again so we can find the right eyes. make these quite shorter if we like. I'm happy with that. Excellent. So now what we can do is we can select all four of these, drums, reverse snare, crash, toms. I've just clicked on the bottom one, held down shift, click on the top one, right click, and group the tracks together. It puts them into a nice little group for us. We can call this group drums as well, and we can give it a wee colour for like giving things colors makes it easier to find stuff because we're going to get pretty pretty in depth soon there we go now there's a drums now we can just close that group down and there's our drums and now we can start focusing on the bass which will be part two we're going to get into bass lines we're going to do 16 it's going to be lots of fun so yeah that's part one uh and that was the drums cheers tomcosm.com